today, guys. Lots of us out there have pressure washers, power washers, whatever you want to call them. Sooner or later, you are going to run into the problem where you have no pressure or low pressure on your pressure washer. Thanks for coming back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to take you through some really easy checks that you can check yourself before you take this into a small engine shop and spend all kinds of money on it getting fixed that might not require that money to be, to be spent. Um, we're talking easy checks. I'm not going to take you into the guts of, of the pump itself. We're talking the, the pistons, the high pressure seals, the little check valves and stuff like that inside of one of these. We're just going to go with the easy stuff right now. I'm going to use uh, Budweiser for doing this job today. I really believe that you can use any beer for doing this job. It's going to be this easy. I have actually heard also that if you don't have beer, a rum and coke will work for this also. So go ahead and try that out if you don't have any beer. First of all, there's generally two different styles of pumps. You can have a horizontal pump. It comes off the side of the engine, like that one right there. And then you have the style that goes underneath of your pump, of your engine like that. And you have a, a, a vertical shaft engine, a lawnmower style engine that sits on top of that to run those. These are a little bit harder to work on. There's not as many adjustments and things to check on these, but um, horizontal pumps, not too bad. First thing I want you to do is hook your pressure washer up like you normally would when you're going to go to use it. Put your garden hose in there, high pressure hose where it should be, wand, hook it all up, don't start your engine. Just have your garden hose turned on. Now when you pull the trigger on that wand, is there any water peeing out of the end of that nozzle? If you pull that trigger, even when your engine's not running, there should be water peeing out of the end of there. If there's no water coming out of that, it's plugged somewhere. Best place to start to check, yes, you got it. The tip, the nozzle itself. Happens all the time, the tip's plugged. Pull the tip, the nozzle out of your wand, hold it up to the light, and see if you can actually see light coming through there. It's a tiny little hole, but you should still be able to see light coming through there. If you can't see light coming through there, there could be something plugged in there, a blockage in there itself. I actually happen to have one right here that is actually plugged. You can clearly see it. There's no light coming through there. It's a little pebble or a little piece of something stuck in there, a little piece of rust maybe coming through the system. Try to unplug that if you want to. A um, little watch repair screwdriver a tiny little screwdriver like this try to poke that out of there um, a twist tie wire works sometimes you just try to get that out of there tiny little drill bit if you have tiny little drill bits get that out of there somehow if you have a compressor with an air hose nozzle on the end of it blow it out until you can see light coming through that tip if you can't get it out simply just pick and pick one of your other nozzles Everybody has an assortment of, of different tips, nozzles for the pressure washer. Just put a different one in. If that fixed your problem, that's great. If you know your tip is clear because you can see light through there, it's blocked somewhere else. The only other place that I can think of that where it would be blocked is right where your high pressure hose goes into the pump itself, right where you clip that on, not your garden hose, but where your high pressure hose goes on. Might be plugged in there. Easy to take that out. Can't give you the wrench size or anything like that because they're just different for every horizontal pump out there. It could be three quarters, it could be a 22 millimeter. Unscrew that out of there. Now when you unscrew this out of there, be aware that there's a little spring and a little plunger thing in there. So don't lose that. Don't drop it on the ground. Have that spring go bang and it's gone. Pull that apart carefully and get that out. There's the spring and the little plunger with uh, a little O-ring on the side of it. Now, 
Do the same thing with that piece right there that you did with the nozzle, the tip. Look through it at a light bulb and see if you can see through that. You should be able to see through there. It's a tiny little hole also. A little bit bigger than the one that's in your nozzle, but it's still a very small hole. If you can't see through that, then that's your problem right there. That's plugged. Most common reason that's going to be plugged is because this little plunger thing that we took out right here, the O-ring on the end of it, you might not see an O-ring on the end of it. If that O-ring is gone, that's actually quite a common thing. That O-ring breaks, it comes off, and it gets jammed in that little tiny little hole in there. Again, unplug that as good as you can. If the O-ring's gone, take your parts into a small engine shop, your local small engine dealer, and just tell them you need a new O-ring for that, and they should be able to set you up with that. So put that all back together again, and screw that in, tighten it up, and now you know that this little outlet coupler is clear. You know that your tip is clear. When you put your garden hose on and pull that trigger, you should see water coming out now. So if there's water coming out, you start your engine up. Yes, there's water coming out, but it's just low pressure. You don't have a blockage anywhere now. We just verified that. The, the two most common reasons that you have low pressure that uh, come across my bench, I see in, in a given year, I'm going to see this right here. Customer brings it in and says, hey, my, low, my, my pressure washer doesn't have any pressure anymore. And you look down at their wand, and there's not even a nozzle in that. I can see how somebody would make that mistake. It looks like there's something on the end of that wand. They don't, people don't know, is that a nozzle? What, what is that? But you pull the trigger on that and it looks like this. It's just water just spraying out the end like that. It's not even spraying, it's just coming out at garden hose pressure. That is extremely common that people bring that in. There's, there's not even a nozzle in it. So make sure you have a nozzle in it. Make sure you can see through it, clear nozzle. Put a nozzle in, did that fix your problem? It's gonna fix somebody's problem out there because I see this come across my bench all the time. The other reason that I see that's very common, everybody's got their little assort, assortment of, of nozzles, they're color coded. You have, your red one is a, is a straight nozzle, some people call this a laser nozzle. It, there's no fan to it at all. It's just straight water comes out. That's your red one. Then you go to your yellow one. That's a 15 degree fan. It's a very narrow fan. 15 degrees. You go to your green one. That's a 25 degree fan. It's a little bigger. You go to your white one. That's a 40 degree fan. A big wide fan like that. And then everybody's going to have the black tip. The black tip one. That is your soap injector nozzle. It's got a huge hole through the center of that thing. Look at the difference between that and that one. That's a big difference between there. This soap injector tip, the black one, is made on purpose to have low pressure. So again, people bring their pressure washer in to me and say this thing has low pressure and they have the, a nozzle in there all right, but you look down and it's a black one. And you go, is that the one you were just trying it with? And they say, well, yeah, that's the wrong tip. That is supposed to have low pressure in it for soap injecting or chemical injecting. So make sure you have the proper tip in it. That's gonna solve some of your problems right there. Make sure your proper tip's in there, try it. You got pressure again, boom, just solved the problem. Here's another one. These tips, a lot of people don't realize, these little nozzle tips actually wear out. It's a tiny little hole in there, and you have extremely high pressure water coming through that hole. Most people have a favorite tip that they use all the time. Water's coming out of there all the time at high pressure. It wears that tip out. The hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're losing pressure all the time as that's wearing out. Easy way to check that 
is that everybody's got one tip that they never use. Most of them, most people never use that red tip, that straight tip. Pick the one that you never use or use the least amount. Simply just take that nozzle because you know it's going to be in good shape. Plug that into your, into your wand and try it again. Oh, you might actually go, whoa, this thing's got way better pressure now. If that's the case, you know that that one that you use all the time is just simply worn out. Go get another tip. Any small engine shop should have these tips, these replaceable tips for you. Another super easy check that you can do. This comes across my bench all the time too. People say my pressure washer has no pressure anymore. It's got low pressure. You take it outside and test it. That's what I do every time. I just test it because I want to see what it's doing. See if it is something simple. I do all those checks we just checked. I take it outside, fire it up. Yeah, that's got low pressure. And I grab that red knob right there. Most of these horizontal type uh, pumps, these vertical pumps themselves don't have this, but the horizontal pumps do. Most of them are a red knob. This red knob is your unloader knob. It's made for adjusting your pressure. How many times have I grabbed that and went, what? And I'm turning it in and turning it in and turning it in and the pressure's coming up and coming up and coming up. The person just didn't realize that that's what that red knob is for. They had it unscrewed almost all the way. They had it set to low pressure on purpose because that's what that red knob's for. Make sure that that red knob, some of them are black, most of them are red, but turn that in all the way. Make sure it's set to be at high pressure. So there's some simple checks for you right there. If none of that fixed your problem, there is one other thing that you can check. Check this last because it's, it's not that common, but I'm gonna show you this anyway. I think this might be because of the climate I live in, to be honest with you. I live in a damp climate. I live on Vancouver Island. So some, some of you out there that live in drier, drier climates may never see this but I see this quite often underneath this red knob when you're turning that red knob in to tighten your unloader up it's it's compressing a really tight spring spring looks like this right here you pull that out it's a really stiff spring I can't even compress that with my thumbs that's how stiff these things are sometimes they get rusted and break just like this one right here look at this one this is so badly rusted it's completely obliterated it's smashed to pieces so when you turn that red knob all the way down it's supposed to be compressing a nice tight spring it can't possibly be compressing a rusted broken spring so it's not going to increase your pressure as you're turning that in Sometimes that's your problem right there. Again, take your parts into a small engine shop and say, hey, you know what? I just need a new spring for this unloader. They'll be able to set you up and get you a new spring. And I'll bet you, if your spring looks like that, that's all you need to do. Change that spring, turn that knob down all the way. Now it's compressing your unloader like it's supposed to be. You're going to have pressure again. So there you go, guys. I hope that some of these tips and tricks that I showed you today helped you out, maybe saved you some money. I know it helped somebody out because this kind of stuff comes across my bench on such a regular basis. So if you liked it, give me that thumbs up button, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Till the next video guys, what can I say? Cheers from Canada, Steve out.